This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. In a stunning decision handed down Friday, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals halted the execution of Rodney Reed, an African-American death row prisoner scheduled to be executed this Wednesday for a murder he says he did not commit. Millions of people around the country have joined the family's cause in recent weeks amidst mounting evidence another man may be responsible for the 96 murder of Stacey Stites, a 19-year-old white woman. Among the celebrities who've taken up Rodney Reed's cause is Kim Kardashian West, who happened to be in the room, who happened to be meeting with Rodney Reed when he was informed he would not be executed, at least for now. On Friday, Kim Kardashian tweeted, quote, "'Today I had the honor of meeting Rodney Reed in person and the privilege of sitting with him when he got the news that the highest court in Texas had issued a stay of execution and remanded the case back to the trial court for further consideration. So grateful for the commitment and passion of everyone who voiced their support, the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles, for their recommendation to issue a 120-day reprieve in the courts for issuing a stay. Kim Kardashian West later sat down with the Today Show and described Reed's response to the news his, execu his execution had been stayed. It was emotional. It was extremely emotional. And he said, praise Jesus. In 1998, an all-white jury sentenced Rodney Reed to die for Stites' murder, after his DNA was found inside her body. But the two were having a relationship at the time of her death. Now new and previously ignored details in the case indicate Stites' then fiancé, a white police officer named Jimmy Fennell, may in fact be responsible for Stacy's murder. Fennell was later jailed on kidnapping and rape charges in another case. Last month, the man who spent time in jail with Fennell signed an affidavit saying Fennell had admitted in prison to killing his fiancée because she was having an affair with a black man. Well, for more, we're joined by Bryce Benjet, a senior attorney at The Innocence Project. He has been representing Reed. He's been working on the case for 18 years. We're also joined by Rodney Reed's brother, Roderick Reed, and his sister-in-law, Uana Akpan. We welcome you all back to Democracy Now! Roderick, I'm going to begin with you. It, you're almost twins with your brother. I mean, you are that close. Talk about where you were when you heard that your brother um, would not be murdered or killed by the state of Texas, at least for now. Uh, actually, I was um, at the airport. Uh, we was traveling back from Washington, D.C., uh, when I got the news. And uh, it was just— all I could do to, you know, hold back tears of joy and, you know, and, and, and thank God, you know, for, for him getting to stay, give us a chance to uh, just do all that we can do to prove his innocence. And Uana, you come to this case later. You've been working on it for a number of years, though. Your response? Um, so, we were actually traveling with uh, Sister Helen's spokesper spokesperson, Griffin Hardy, and he was the one who told us about the 120—or the Board of Pardons and Paroles 120-day um, reprieve. And then, when we got on the plane, um, actually, so uh, there was an issue with our plane. The air traffic controllers, they weren't ready yet or whatever, and I had my phone on airplane mode, and then I took it off of airplane mode, and then, like, immediately, Bryce, he called us, and he was the one who told us that the Court of Criminal Appeals, um, you know, did the indefinite stay, and I was just like, oh, my goodness, you know? And I told Roderick, and we were just so kind of, like, in shock because of, like, the stuff that had happened with them previously, um, and just thankful to God, you know? that we didn't have to wait over the weekend to, you know, until Monday to get a decision that we had it prior to the weekend starting. So it was a, a, a blessing. Roger, yes, have you was. talked to your brother? No, I have not talked to him. I'm scheduled to see him next week. Uh, so— Yes, I haven't talked to him yet. Bryce Benjet, you've worked on this case for 18 years. Um, can you explain what exactly this decision means? Sure. This is a decision that we've been trying to get for, uh, you know, not decades, really. Uh, this is a, an opportunity for us, obviously, to avoid the execution, but more importantly, to present all of the evidence in this case 
uh, that shows that Rodney Reed didn't commit the crime. Uh, so everything that we were asking for from the court uh, was granted in this in this order. So we're we're very pleased with the order, and, and we're getting ready now to uh, go to court and present all of this evidence, which both exonerates uh, Rodney Reed and, and implicates somebody else in the murder. So, of course, we're not then just talking about uh, Rodney Reed not being executed, because if ultimately he is not executed, it's going to be because of evidence of innocence, which would mean he would be freed. Talk about what you asked for. Sure. Uh, you know, so we really presented three different kinds of evidence. There's uh, first scientific evidence that shows that Rodney's guilt is physically impossible, that this crime took place at a time that Jimmy Finnell testified he was alone with Stacy. Jimmy Finnell being the fiancé, um, white police officer, um, who was going to marry Stacy Stites, apparently. Yeah, and, and in fact was also a prime suspect in the murder until uh, Rodney Reed was uh, associated with uh, Stacy Stites. So uh, this type of evidence, scientific evidence, that shows that Rodney's guilt is impossible. Uh, there's a second category of evidence, which is evidence that shows that Rodney and Stacy had a relationship. These are coworkers of Stacy um, and even uh, her cousin. And then there's a third category. Who all category. said she told yes, her, she her, told them about her relationship with Rodney. Yes, she told about the relationship to coworkers, and she also was seen with Rodney by her own cousin. Uh, and then third, there's a relationship. There, excuse me. There's evidence of uh, Fennell's guilt, uh, being his statements, uh, confessing to the crime. Statements. Where did that statement go? He was in prison for rape and kidnapping after the murder of Stacey Stites, but they never went back. They never even tested the murder weapon, a belt, um, for DNA, though they have it. Um, where did that statement go? Did you know about it? So that was a statement that was made uh, while Fennell was in prison for another crime and made to a leader of the Aryan Brotherhood in the prison that he was in. Um, and so it's a, it's a somewhat extraordinary statement that we're continuing to investigate. Uh, and that, so as we've investigated this case, evidence continues to mount that shows that Rodney didn't commit the crime and implicates Fennell. And, and this is an open investigation. We continue to investigate leads, and we look forward to presenting all of this evidence in court. Now, Stacy had clearly said she was afraid of uh, Jimmy Finnell, right? Her f those those are statements that are attributed to her from from a variety of witnesses that we've talked to, and and that there was an air of intimidation throughout this trial. Talk about the belt. Explain sure. what happened. How was Stacy murdered? Yeah, so uh, Stacy Stites was murdered with a belt. At the time, uh, the technology for DNA testing was not available to test skin cells or things like that, which were handled by the murderer. Uh, today we can. And so Explain one of the where things, her body was found very quickly. Oh, and her body was found off the side of a, uh, a road in rural Bastrop County. Um, and one of the most important things about her body was that it indicates that she had been killed for hours prior to being left at that scene, uh, which again places the time of death at a time that Jimmy Fennell testified the two were alone in their apartment. And that he would have uh, possibly took that body. Yes, and, and that body then was transported in the truck. We see decompositional uh, fluid in the truck. So we know she was dead for hours before she left that truck. Um, and again, that places her death at a time hours earlier than what was presented at the trial. Um, and that implicates Jimmy Fennell and not Rodney Reed. So Reed. how do you get this belt tested? Well, we've uh, actually presented this request to numerous courts. Uh, we are in the federal court system asking for that DNA testing. We're continuing to pursue that. Uh, and we certainly encourage the state, uh, the district attorney, the AG, uh, to really look at this case. Uh, because I think when you really look at these facts, uh, the only conclusion you can reach is that Rodney Reed didn't commit the crime, and somebody else did. I want to turn to Rodney Reed in his own words. Here he's speaking in an interview with the popular daytime TV host Dr. Phil, who visited him in prison on death row this aired in September. I am absolutely innocent of this case. I absolutely had nothing to do with Stacy's death. I want to be a father to my kids. I want to be a grandfather to my grandchildren. I want to be, be able to be the son 
to look after my mother uh, and the brother to my brothers. I want to be a part of my family and my friend's life. So that is Rodney Reed. Roderick, we're going to end with you. We just have about 30 seconds. What are you calling for right now? What exactly does this mean to you, the stopping of the execution for at least 120 days and where this case goes from here? What are you going to say to your brother when you see him next week? I'm going to tell him that we're not going to stop uh, applying the pressure to get him uh, a, a new trial to exonerate his name, um, and that God has been working through all of us to uh, get justice, not just for him, but for Stacey Stites as well. And, and that's what we, we, we're committed to and not going to stop until it's done. Well, I want to thank you and, all. Go ahead, Roger. And, and just, you know, we love him, and, and we can't wait till our family is whole again. Roderick Reed, brother of Rodney Reed, Juana Akpan, sister-in-law of Rodney, and Bryce Benjet, senior staff attorney with The Innocence Project. He's been working on the case for 18 years. That does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Libby Rainey, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Masood, Trina Durte, Maria Studio, and Maria Tarasena. I'm Amy Goodman.